So we're going to mix it up for tonight's keynote. I'm really excited about this. We're having a Q&A session with EDCO's new venture catalyst, Deanne Buck. Since Express Employment Professionals checked her references, and we know she's legit, we will simply get to know her a little better tonight. And don't worry, you'll get to join in as well. It won't just be me. So before I bring her up, I'm just going to give you a, a little bit more background for Deanne is in the process of relocating from Boulder, Colorado. She brings with her experience in entrepreneurial ecosystems, fundraising, organizational development, a network of friends and colleagues in Central Oregon's outdoor industry and a law degree, and even more than that, she's a very impressive person, and she's been hard at work already connecting with the startups, investors, and getting settled into EDCO's important VC role. What do you say, Deanne? Are you ready for the hot seat? Where are you, my friend? Come on up. Round of applause for Deanne. I had to negotiate the beer line. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Bend. Thank you. I'm so Thank glad you. to see you here in person. Are you sitting down? Well, are I we can. Down? I we'll sure can. Down. Yeah, why don't we? We'll just get cozy. So um, congratulations on getting the, the part. Thank you. It's such an exciting role. And I know you're going to be just perfect for it. But I want to dive into the important questions first. So I hear you have a dog. Tell me more. <laughs> oh, wait. The slide went away. There's a slide. Um, so my dog's name is Ali, like Muhammad Ali. Oh. <laughs> this photo was taken when I, uh, I had a stress fracture, so I had to get him out, so I just put my boot on, put a bag over it, and ride my bike around, and oh. sometimes he would come home with me, and sometimes he wouldn't. So, <laughs> so he has a rap sheet and a personal <laughs> lawyer. I've been in front of the judge three times, and the last time she was like, I don't want to see you. And I'm like, I don't want to see you either. Um, so he's coming to Bend. So I, ho I hope all of you, if you see him out running around, he has a little tag that says, Wondering Not Lost. So just, just give me a call. My phone number is on there. Oh my God, I love it so yeah, much. I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm like, I feel like we're going to feel the moment he arrives. Yeah, I think so. I think so. <laughs> That's so great. So what do you think you're going to miss most about Boulder? I've been in Boulder for 25 years. Uh, I went there for law school. And when I was uh, looking at law schools, I got into CU Davis and I got into Boulder. And I had started climbing and I knew that was what I wanted to do. And so uh, Yosemite was like four hours from Davis and the uh, flat irons were four minutes from CU Boulder. So I moved there and I like I always say like it was never thought out or well planned and I ended up being there for 25 years. So I love the proximity to climbing, but there's Smith Rock here and the flat irons. Um, they're right outside my front door. Um, the other thing that I shared with uh, Shannon was we have a, our former governor is now a senator, um, and his name's Hickenlooper, and he's a banjo player, and he's like a brewer. So I'm going to be looking for our elected officials to like step it up a little bit in Oregon. Multi-talented. Exactly. Yeah, we need Sally exactly. Russell to learn how to play the banjo. I hear yep. what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, so you lived in Boulder for 25 years. You saw a huge shift happen oh in gosh, Boulder. Huge, huge shift. And what yeah. was that like? I'm sure you learned a lot. Um, I did. Well, it's funny because I went to law school and they, there was just this startup of entrepreneurship. And so I, would, I took this law and entrepreneur class and it was in, 90, in the late 90s. And they were like, there's this thing called the LLC. Like, we're not quite <laughs> sure what it is or if it's going to last. And so the change in entrepreneurship has just been crazy over the last 25 years. And in some ways, Boulder's been on the forefront of it um, and really embraced it. And um, But places like Bend are also crazy uh, entrepreneurial. The one thing about uh, Boulder is just the build out, um, the housing, uh, a little bit of the uh, like sameness of everything. So I'm actually, I'm really looking forward to moving. I hear the traffic there is terrible. Tra traffic is terrible. I was telling Aaron, my coworker today, I was like, it's, it's five minutes to anywhere. I know. Here in Ben. I know. That's how I felt when I moved here too. And it's still only six minutes. So if you're a complainer, maybe go to Boulder and just get a taste. Just get a taste. Um, so tell me something that you're really looking forward to about Central Oregon and moving here. There's so much. First of all, people are so friendly. The first time I came here, I, um, so if people don't know, Edco is 
uh, right on the river. It's, um, I don't know the, the, the area, but you literally go out the door, down the stairs, and you're on the river trail. Um, and the first, the first uh, week I was here, I went for a walk with a friend, and I mean, I feel like people are fighting to say hello first. <laughs> So people are just really friendly, and then it's beautiful, and living with a river in the center of a city is um, amazing. I think there's something really peaceful about that, and I, agree. I love seeing the community come together around that, and I've really noticed that. I agree. It's so beautiful. I know when I first moved here, I was like, oh, I traded in the river that is I-5 for the Deschutes. That was a... <laughs> Really good move. Yeah, it's a really incredible river to have right in the middle of town. So, okay, this is a fun question. Tell us something about yourself that we can't learn in a 25-minute interview, but we'll know about you in six months. Oh, wow. Does anyone want to go first? <laughs> um, well, the one thing I was thinking about just, I mean, I didn't show it today, but there's a Galaga machine in the other room, and I, I think I'll have the high score. In six months. I, today, today was not good. They need to grease the button a little bit, but I, I'll get there. I love it. Um, anybody want to chime in with a question for Deanne? I have more, but I want to open it up. Yes, Stewie. I live in Boulder in the 70s. Boulder in the 70s, okay. So, so in the 70s, the maintaining green spaces and the urban growth boundary was really important. Has that been honored? That, that, it's, it's really fascinating. So yeah, so um, Boulder can never grow um, because th uh, there's green space all around it, which is beautiful and amazing, and it provides um, great access to the outdoors. The problem is it's putting pressure on the entire housing situation. So I would say... Um, like 10 years ago, we were looking for a house, maybe 15, and the prices were like 400 to 700,000, and now you literally cannot get anything under 2 million. Wow. Stewie, I learned something new about you tonight. You lived in Boulder in the 70s. I know. Good to know. I Good know. to know. Um, what about, uh, so this is like kind of an interview question. What makes you the right person for Edco's venture catalyst role? I know they were picky. I know it took a long time to find you and secure you for the role. Um, but I also hear they're very excited to have you. I know I am very excited for you to be here. So what makes you right for the role? Well, I think I, I mean, I would probably have to ask them a little bit, but, um, I, uh, I have a pretty varied background and I think that, brings a lot to the table. Um, I have a law degree. I was working in the outdoor industry. Uh, I worked with a lot of CEOs around their talent acquisition strategies, especially like in the outdoor industry. You can have companies and they're, it's really like technology um, wrapped up in fun is the way outdoor industry companies are. And so they're especially, um, and it's a young, it's a young industry. So a lot of the owners were still first generation. And so they would just hire their friends and they would grow really fast. I'm sure other people kind of recognize this and they would just grab people. I just, you know, I have to grab someone to fill a role. And so there wasn't much thought around it. And I worked with the company Arteryx and I remember I talked to them, at the CEO at the time, and he was like, we're 300 employee company and we're just now going from organic to organized and how we think about culture and hiring. So I did a lot of work with CEOs around that. And then part of, part of what I did with that position was also start an accelerator for women in the outdoor industry um, and had some pretty amazing companies come through. Oregon companies like Renewal Workshop went through and The Dirt um, were two of them. Uh, so we had 36 companies come through. So I feel like I just kind of keep accumulating experiences um, and trying to really bring an entrepreneurial mindset to the work that I do. What are you most excited about in your new role? Oh my gosh, I love the people. I mean, I've met just a couple of um, entrepreneurs in the last couple of days and it's so energizing. But then the community around to support this is, um, it's, I, I, I can't tell you how many people have reached out to me and just like, we're committed to your success. We're committed to the success of the community. I just can't tell you how happy it makes me to hear you reflecting back to us that we're receiving you well and, and that, we're, that we're showing up well. That's, that's really great to hear. 
So yeah, fun. of course. And I think before I move on, I really do want to give a shout out to the Edco team. Um, they're in the back. If you could just raise your hands. I have incredible teammates. And there's John and Steve and Aaron. And I know that some of them are in the other room. So, yeah, incredible team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Incredible. Yeah, you hit the jackpot. I did. For sure. <laughs> um, so Although I do have to find a house. Yes, <laughs> yes. That, that's going to be like winning the lottery. Exactly. So you hit the jackpot with Edco, now you got to win the lottery. So <laughs> tell your friends. What's that? What's your budget? What's your budget? Uh, if I could get under 2500 or twenty, yeah, 2500 a month, that'd be great. We can make it happen. But remember, Ollie has to come with me. Yeah. Well, I'll, you might have to dress Ollie up in pants and a shirt. Yeah, I know. Then... He's that big. He could do it. <laughs> he could pull, I feel I, like I, he could actually, pull it off. I went and I talked to some guy last night. He's like, small dogs. I was like... He, he's not small. <laughs> he's not yeah, small. He's not, no, he's yeah, he's not small. And he's not going to get small. No. no, he's going to stay big. No, he could go How on a old diet. is he? He could go on a diet. Um, <laughs> 10 years old. Aw. Yeah, my golden could go. He is on a diet, and he's also 10. Um, what do you do when you're not working? Uh, I love running. I love being outside. Um, I, do, I do some painting and art, too, so I like that. Um, yeah, spending time with friends. Yeah, and how important is it to you to have that work-life balance? Oh, so huge, so huge. Yeah, really important. I think. Yeah, I think especially like working with entrepreneurs. Um, one of the things that I did over the pandemic was um, I went and got an executive coaching um, certificate. And the nice thing about that and the people that I work with, they're all about what they call resonant leadership. And it's like, how do we replenish ourselves? Mm. And I think as entrepreneurs, that's really important. To, um, to think about the long term, um, you know, it's a marathon for sure, but a lot of sprints in between. Yeah, and we have to enjoy our time while we're here, right? Absolutely. So that's also really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions for Deanne as we're moving through our time together? Anybody have questions? You know, I see like a lot of very happy faces. Bless you. Allergies. Um, <laughs> what is your one wish for EDCO? Um, I, EDCO is a phenomenal organization, and every time I talk to someone in the community, all I hear is great things. And I haven't yet met Roger Lee yet, but um, I only hear positive things about everything that he brought to the community. Um, so I lost my train of thought of the question because I was wish. just like, I was yeah. loving on the team <laughs> Roger so is wonderful. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. He is, I can confirm. Yeah. Um, your wish, do you have a wish for the organization? Um, you know, under John's leadership, it's such a strong organization. And I think, you know, he's, I know he's said he's committed to like um, making sure that we are one of the top employers ourselves. And I think they've already done an amazing job of creating that culture. And so I think just, continuing to invest in the employees and really to grow to our potential. Mm, I love that. I love that. I love that wish. Um, okay, here's a fun one. What's your favorite movie and why? Okay, so they, I, I don't watch that many movies, so they asked me this in my interview, and I, ha I freaked out a little bit. <laughs> so, um, and the one that I came up with, and I'm going to stand by it, um, it's called, I wrote it down, wait, it's called Tom Dowd. Has anyone seen this one before? Um, oh, The Language of Music. Oh. And it's fascinating because this guy was a, um, he was like a nu nuclear physicist. He was super smart. And they pulled him out of high school to work on the Manhattan Project. So he went and did that. And then he went back to college and he was like they were teaching things that I developed and so he became really kind of dismayed by that and so he loved music and so he went and he created surround sound and he ended up working with like Ray Charles and all the uh, phenomenal groups back in the day they didn't have like different you know the music coming out of different places right it's wow. a great it's a really that sounds really good yeah, it is the the language of music yes the language of music. We'll have a quiz on it next time. It's <laughs> trivia night <laughs> over there. That's so right. It we could are come up. Do it's like just trivia. random enough. Um, well, you're a very well-rounded person. You're like very smart. You're very fun. You're like casual, but also slightly fancy. You have a very big dog. He's like all these fun things about really you. I really well enjoy I just it. Don't. <laughs> um, what about your favorite concert you've ever been to? Um, well, so Red Rocks is in outside of Boulder. That's a really phenomenal place to see a uh, concert. Um, and 
my some of my friends like Boulder's a small community, and so um, I'm friends of friends with the String Cheese <laughs> incident. And so every time they play, we get backstage passes, which is oh, pretty. pretty yeah, it's pretty fun. So, <laughs> well, Alanis Morissette is coming to Lush uh, Hayden Holmes <laughs> Amphitheater. Uh, <laughs> Atlantis Morissette and garbage. So just put that on your calendar. I, I think it I happens in August. Um, in five years, what do you hope EDCO has accomplished? Uh, you know, I think there's just such a strong foundation in the resources that EDCO provides to the community. Every day, I'm just amazed. Um, we had a call today with someone, and we were... John and Steve were just talking about, and, and Tom Schnell was there, and Cappy was there, and th the partnerships, and we were just talking about all the resources available to entrepreneurs, and the person we were talking to was like, this is like the best kept secret. And so maybe part of, in five years, it's not such a good, best kept secret. Yeah, maybe just establishing better ways of doing things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot for a minute. Okay. Uh, what is the speed limit in a roundabout? The question is for Deanne. <laughs> what he <What's> said. <laughs> what is the speed limit in a roundabout? Uh, I would say 15. 15 miles an hour. Okay. Did I get it? Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, I have another question about roundabouts. Uh, what is the proper blinker etiquette? None. Wow. Deanne, exiting blinker. Exiting blinker. What does that mean? It means so when you're your leaving, exit? let people know you're leaving. I'm going this way. Yeah, but so you go in, and then you're like putting your blinker on to go in, and then you have to put you it on to go out. You don't have to put it in. You don't have to put it on to go in. You put it in just to go out, so that okay. the next person. It's especially helpful during snow season, so that the next person can go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. One more. <laughs> Aside from helping moderate the traffic flow, what is the main purpose of the roundabout? <laughs> Roundabouts are for flirting, Deanne. Welcome to Bend. <laughs> okay, if you're not flirting in the roundabout, Deanne, you're doing it wrong. Questions from the audience for Deanne. We've covered mm -hmm. roundabouts. <laughs> Anybody? 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 How about you? Do you have a question for our community? Oh, wow. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite flavor of homemade toffee? Uh, just the one I had. It's the only one I've had. The original. Was, the, the you hazelnut. can't go wrong with the. Oh the yeah, you can't go wrong with the hazelnut with the original. Um, okay, so let's see here. Any questions? Any other question? Yes. Do you have a ninety-day plan? Ninety plan? All right. Survive. Um, <laughs> <laughs> find a house. Yeah, step find one. a house. <laughs> um, it's uh, so the best part about this is it's about like learning the community and so. What I've really tried to do is just be available and when people reach out to meet with them to really know what their resources are because that's the way I'm going to be the most helpful to the entrepreneur. So, you know, I, I can't sit here and just do that for 90 days without meeting with the entrepreneur as well. As well. Um, by the end of the 90 days, we do have a portfolio of companies. Um, and because the position was vacated for about eight months, we're doing a refresh on that. So if you're in the audience and you're an entrepreneur, reach out to me. We want to make sure that we're putting you in the pipeline and we're reaching out to you. Um, by the end of the 90 days, I would love to know who's in the, uh, who's in the community, who's doing entrepreneurial things and really being set to support them. I'm so excited for you because this is a really fun lineup of people for you to meet and get to know. Um, thoughts on Ben Venture Conference? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited? That, that's not my 30-day plan. No, no. I mean, it's a ways I, away. It's sorry, a ways no. away. No. Um, it, okay, so it is... Um, I've heard so many great things about it. I haven't attended it yet, but the reputation of the Ben Venture Conference uh, precedes it. I think it'll be a like big shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. um, but the team last year did it without the venture catalyst, so props to them. Um, they were all working like three jobs when they did it, and it came off beautifully. And it's such a great opportunity to connect 
entrepreneurs with funding. You know, I think in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, making sure that you have the community able to invest in the companies that are local is really important because it helps to create that community and people are invested uh, more. And so I'm really looking forward to that. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. Biggest and venture cap capital, v venture conference on the West Coast, I think, right? Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. biggest. It's so fun. And you learn so much because the topics are just all over the place. Exactly. Yeah, it's really fun. So you just have to open your brain up and then stay hydrated. Um, <laughs> any other questions from the audience? Are there, is there anything else that you want to share with us about how, you know, what you're looking forward to, what you're planning to work on, or, or how we can support you even, I feel like is a great question. Like, what are the things that people can help to get you up to speed and, and help you accomplish your goals here? Sure. Like I said, if you just, uh, I have business cards, and if you're in the audience and you've been, one of the things that we're looking at is we have these experts and mentors, and it's a great way for people who have had the experience of a company or on the um, capital side of things, the equity side of things to give back. So if you're one of those people, let me know. We're looking at redoing um, or revitalizing that program. Um, and then also, if you have been an investor, reach out to me and let me know. And also, if you're an entrepreneur, reach out. Yeah, so get in touch. And I know that you don't like to say, like, you have a favorite sector or anything like that. So that's not what I'm asking. But are there any specific industries that you're really excited about right now? Well, so I came from outdoor. Um, so I worked with Hydro Flask and Rough Wear um, while I was at my past job and really just have a passion for the outdoor industry. Um, I'm a little obsessed right now with Web 3.0 pin drop. <laughs> What's 3.0? Exactly. <laughs> so that's it's like us. the new frontier. Does anyone here know what 3.0 is? Anybody know what 3.0 is? Anyone? One person. Some? Todd knows. Um, I'm learning about it, but the, the thought is, it's almost it's, like... It's it, not Bitcoin, right? It, it, it is. Part, it's part blockchain. Oh my God. Yeah, yep. But the, the thought around it is... Um, when, when we started web, it was static pages, right? When we started the internet. And yes. then web 2.0 was uh, you're feeding information to someone. So you're feeding all your information to Facebook and they're making money off of you. And web 3.0 is that you get to own, this is like, oh, wow. you get to own your own identity. Um, and I think that there's probably like a transition, like, you know how we have the um, transition economy from oil to, to green? I think there's gonna be like a transition economy Am I just blowing smoke or what? Oh, good. <laughs> no, I think you did great because yeah. when people start talking crypto stuff, I just, I, I stroke out a little. And so actually I'm still with you. I know. Yeah. That yeah. was, I'm it's like, tell me more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's so, very exciting. I mean, that's not the area that I'm looking for in Ben, but that's just a personal kind of obsession that I'm on right oh, now. Oh, it's so cool. No, I love that. I love that a lot. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? We just really open the doors on this thing. You're not into, oh, oh yes. Uh, no, Aaron, you don't have a question. Aaron. Oh. Time for one more. Okay, this is our last question. Oh, wait, we got one more. Stewie. Do you have an uncle? What's that? Do you have an uncle Buck? Oh, do you have an uncle Buck? I do. <gasps> well, doesn't, I mean, it's not Uncle Buck. But it is, it is an Uncle Buck. <laughs> do you have an Uncle Buck? I the movie by heart. I could probably <laughs> we could probably reenact the entire Who here has seen Uncle Buck the movie? Four people. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Stewie, you really brought it home when the last question. I know, I know, really did. Yeah. You really you really went there. And for those of you who haven't seen Uncle Buck, I'm pretty sure you could find it at the last blockbuster located on Third Street. <laughs> If you get there on time, they probably have two copies and one on VHS. Deanne, welcome to Central Oregon. Thank I you. cannot be happier that you're here. This is just such a pleasure. And um, I am really looking forward to seeing what you accomplish and getting to know you better. And I'm, I'm glad that you accepted the position. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. And we're going to find you a house. We're okay. going to find you a house. Oh, before you go, before you go, so this is our, our tradition. You get the Pub Talk beer stein, and you can bring this back with you. You can keep it on your desk. You can fill it with flowers, but you can bring it back to next month's Pub Talk, and you can fill it. We'll fill it for you for free, and that's for life. Oh, wow.